If the Dear Fat People video made you so upset that you cried, you should probably reevaluate how you look at life. Hi, this is AI Everything, and I don't get in front of the camera. I've made 200 plus videos, and I'm not in front of the camera in these videos. But the responses to the Dear Fat People video have prompted me to make this response. Now, I heard about, and this is important for context and to get to why I'm here. I heard about the Dear Fat People video from other YouTubers, and they were talking about it as if it was this really horrific thing. And it was people I respect, so I thought it must be a very horrific thing. And her channel even got pulled, so I thought, wow, this must be a really horrific thing. Well, then her channel came back up. I watched the video. It was not horrific. Was it funny? I didn't laugh. I mean, does that mean it's not funny? I don't know. A lot of people say she's not funny. Well, you can't say that someone's not funny any more than you can say a piece of art is not beautiful. You know what I mean? It's, it, it's subjective. It's opinion. But I didn't laugh. All right, for, so for what that's worth. I never heard of Nicole Arbor. I wasn't a fan of hers. I had no idea who she was. But I went in expecting to see a really heinous video. And I was shocked. It was actually pretty benign. Compared to the reactions that that video got, it was pretty benign. So these reactions that I saw, there were grown people shaking and crying in the reaction videos. And, and those shaking and crying videos have thousands of thumbs ups on them, so I guess people agree with that sentiment. I'm assuming uh, market, uh, the marketplace, uh, the free marketplace of ideas and all those thumbs up, I assume people agree with that sentiment, the whole shaking and crying. And there were people that are like, sorry, I can't stop crying, I can't stop shaking. They were saying that in their, in their response videos. So, yeah, I was expecting a lot worse. And the video wasn't that bad. It was not that offensive. And let me tell you something. I know a thing or two about being self-conscious about your looks. Because 200 plus videos, I'm not in any of them. Now, I do product review videos. I have several product review videos. I'm not in them. I'm demonstrating the product, but you don't see me in front of the camera. Not my face. You see my, you see my hands. You see my arms. You don't see me. I know about being self-conscious. Throughout my life, I've been fatter than I am now, and then I've been actually really thin and in great shape, very muscular, actually. I, I used to be a butterface, right? A, probably a harsh term in today's society, but a butterface is like, hey, everything looks good, butterface. Guys can be butterfaces too. I was a butterface. I was pretty buff. I worked out a lot. So... I've been all over the place. I've got health issues, all right? Like my joints are pretty messed up. I can't really work out. I was in the military, loved it. Here, let me, um, this is like my fifth time trying to make this video. I have a much longer and more probably coherent video, but it was unreasonably long. So here I am. This is me 10 years ago, all right? 185 pounds. Size 30 jeans, six foot tall. Uh, I could run eight miles back then. I could sprint two or three miles, like sprint. Not even like screwing, not jogging. I mean, like I could sprint that. So used to be in really good shape. And I've got some pretty bad health issues going on. I used to curl 80 pound dumbbells. And now I curl this. Also, another thing, you know how, um, oh, this is, this is five pounds. This hurts. Just putting it back on the desk, that hurts. That's um, how bad the, the joints are. So, and you know how a second ago I just said, sorry, I'm going to keep hitting this desk. So just a second ago, I, you know, I talked about how I was in the military. I was pretty good with my weapon, all right? I was pretty good. I qualified with a ton of weapons. I was usually first time, first go up on the range. That was important to me. I was proficient, first time, first go, good at lots of stuff. So here I am, I'm out of the military now got all this health stuff going on. I've gained a lot of weight. And when my friends ask me to go shooting with them, I, I normally don't go shooting with them because my joints are so bad. Like I have trouble even shooting, like shooting at targets and stuff. I'm embarrassed. Um, why does that matter? Well, it matters because 
I know what it's like to be self-conscious. Am I 400 pounds the biggest guy you've ever seen? No. But I was wearing size 30 jeans and these right here are my size 42 Rockaway jeans. I don't wear these right now. I actually I wear these. I think these are size 38 over here. Yeah. These are my size 38 Sean Johns, but I keep my size 42 Rockawares. Why? Well, my weight fluctuates. Sorry, I got here. Here's how this works. I got a bad back. I can't sit still. I got to keep moving. Um, this desk is a corner desk. I don't get in front of the camera often. I can't, I got to tilt the chair. I'm going to hit the desk. Let's move on. Okay, so. I'm making this video because a YouTube video should not be able to make you cry. At least not one that makes fun of people. Even if you are fat, a YouTube video should not make you cry. Okay? It, it shouldn't. It just, it should not. And it was more than fat people. It was skinny people who cried too. And people described what she said as hate. And I was expecting hate. when I Like people that I respect said it was a hateful and heinous video. So I expected a hateful and heinous video. And it, it was so benign. It really was. And that got me to thinking, um, oh, real quick, this is, I didn't get to this in my other takes of the video. Uh, I've got a lot of neck fat these days, which really bothers me. So what I did was, okay, going to sleep at night is really difficult for me uh, because of the joint pain and everything. And I got a lot of stuff going on. So going to sleep is difficult for me. And while I'm waiting for my body to... Um, you know, wind down or whatever from the day. I started using this so I could sit up straight so hopefully I wouldn't have as much neck fat instead of like laying in bed and, you know, like having, having my head tilted and, and looking at an, at an iPad or something. So, yeah, I know what it's like to be self-conscious. Um, I've been on social media since 2010. I've never smiled. I need dental work, guys. I've gained all this weight. I need dental work. I got pictures with my kids. I don't post pictures with my kids because, you see, what happens is other people are taking those pictures of you when, when someone's taking a picture of you with your kids. And, you know, like you normally look fat. Well, in this one, well, I do. So, in this one, the, like, and you know, there's no point in showing you this, but th th it's a picture of me with, with uh, one of my kids and I'm fat in it. And I don't post pictures of myself on social media because I don't like the fact that I've gained all this weight. I don't like the fact that I'm a grown man that needs dental work. I don't like it. So I know, I know what it is to be self-conscious. But people were saying this video was so heinous and they were shaking and they were crying and I was believing it. I was like, oh my goodness, this is going to be a really bad video. And I watched it, and it wasn't, all right? It wasn't. And I know I've said that a handful of times, and I'll, I'll move forward now. See, I grew up in the 80s and 90s. And, you know, like stuff today, it's 2015 right now, and stuff from the mid-2000s is still relevant. So, like, in the 80s and 90s, humor, stand-up comedy from the 70s was still relevant, right? So I'm at that age where like I saw the Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy in his prime, um, Steve Martin in his prime, not that Steve Martin was like real gritty or hardcore or anything, but like I saw all these comedians when comedy was like kind of going through a renaissance in the, in the 70s and 80s and 90s. And what I think a lot of people forget, which is crazy because people my age should remember this. Y'all should remember, but you don't seem to. And people older than me should remember, but they don't seem to. Um, people younger than me, maybe you weren't exposed to it. I get that. But comedy used to be hardcore. Everybody was fair game. Everybody was on that chopping block. I think about Dave Chappelle, and everyone says, why did Dave Chappelle quit? I don't know why he quit, but let me, let's do a thought exercise real quick. Think about Dave Chappelle's comedy. Everybody got it, right? Including black people. Now today, you cannot say anything about black people in 2005. You can't. 2015, you can't do that. Dave Chappelle had a bit in The Chappelle Show where he said if black people got reparations, they would buy cigarettes and, like, waste the money. And he had this skit, and he had black people 
like this, this black dude bought a cigarette truck filled with cigarettes. And I forget the other things in the bit, but the gist of it was that you could give black people reparations, but they would waste it. Dave Chappelle made that joke not that long ago, and in case y'all might not know this, but the Chappelle show was big for its time. It was huge. That's, that's part of why it was such a big story that he walked away. If he made that joke today, he'd probably be crucified, right? Probably be crucified. So let's talk about another joke that I have memories of that you can't make today, apparently. Dennis Leary had a comedy routine. Dennis Leary was a stand-up comedian. A lot of you might not know that. Maybe you know, maybe you know him from Rescue Me or whatever that TV show is. He was a stand-up comedian. And I had one of his discs, okay? Uh, I think it was called No Cure for Cancer. It may have been another one. I, I don't know. I had two of his discs. But on, on this one bit in particular that's coming to my mind, he said Elvis, Elvis Presley should have been shot in the head before he got fat. He was doing this whole routine about how he didn't want to become fat. And he, like, he was a homophobic for fat people, basically. Like, he was just going in on fat people. Like, he was just going in. I can't even remember everything. And what I could have done is I could have tried to, like, watch the video again before I did this. But I wanted to, like, have a fresh conversation for you. I just wanted to sit down and do this. So, I didn't watch it again. But I remember he was just slandering fat people. And he specifically said Elvis Presley should have been shot in the back of the head. He said uh, Elvis Presley, back when he was like real good looking and skinny and everything, before he got fat, somebody should have walked up to Elvis Presley, put a gun to the back of his head, and pulled the trigger. And he said that would have been a better way to remember Elvis dying than the way he really died, which was overdosing as a fat man in a bathroom, something along those lines. So that joke probably couldn't be made today. And here's what I'm trying to tell you, and there, there's a lot that I want to tell you is you shouldn't be that upset over that Nicole Arbor video. First of all, it was, it was weak sauce, like, it, compared to real hate speech, all right? If that's, if that's supposed to be hate, that's some weak sauce hate speech, guys. Like, I've seen some much stronger hate speech, all right? That's, that was weak. That, that wasn't even minor leagues. That was, like, amateur night, if you want to talk about hate speech. We live in a country where just a week ago, a police officer in Texas was shot in the head, in real life, was shot in the head at a gas station. Imagine if you were pumping gas at that gas station and somebody shoots a cop in the head. That news story should make you cry. That news story should bring deep feelings in you. I don't have deep feelings about things, okay? I'm, I'm a cool cucumber. Like, I don't, I don't get upset by much. On an intellectual level, I am, I guess, upset. I'm unhappy about the fact that police officers are being shot in the head at gas stations. That upsets me on an intellectual level. But even that doesn't set me off like shaking and crying. But then again, I don't have the kind of personality to be shaking and crying. You see what I mean? But if you have the kind of personality where upsetting news is going to make you shake and cry, the fact that, okay, over in Africa, you have militant groups, and in the Middle East, you have militant groups that go into villages, and they kill the men, and they rape the women and children, and usually end up killing them too. Like, that's the kind of stuff. It, it's so funny to me, because I see people act like they are heroes, and they are activists when they get upset over a fat shaming video. And they get treated like they're an activist, like they're Rosa Parks, like they're Martin Luther King. You are not Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King if you are crying and bearing a cross for fat people getting made fun of in a YouTube video. I don't know how to word this without being offensive, and I don't want to be offensive, right? Um, I'm a blue collar person, I've always been blue collar my whole life. So the way things work inside my brain are not always um, the most polite. Um, you know, I come from a long history of like dock workers and things like that. So it's hard. And I started, I started unloading like train cars when I was 14. All right. So I've always been around 
I have impolite thoughts sometimes, and I'm trying not to speak in an impolite manner. I'm trying to be sensitive here. I'm trying. I really am. I'm trying to be sensitive. But a fat shaming YouTube video should not make anyone cry. Okay, it just shouldn't. It should not make you shaking and upset. And audiences of these response videos to Nicole Arbor should not be treating the people who cry in their response videos as martyrs. I, let me break this down for you. Nicole Arbor makes a not-so-nice video. I don't even know if I would go so far as to say it's mean, but I'll say it's mean for sake of argument. Nicole Arbor makes a mean video. And then YouTuber A, this is YouTuber A, YouTuber A makes a video shaking and crying about how mean Nicole Arbor's video was. And then YouTuber A gets treated like a martyr for that. Guys, that's, that's, that's not martyrdom. That's, it, it's blowing my mind. You see, the, the internet used to be called the information superhighway, superhighway. And the great promise that the internet superhighway had uh, information superhighway had was, you know, it was going to enlighten us. It was going to bring us enlightenment. It was going to make us, I don't know, more sophisticated. It, it was going to, it was going to elevate us for sure. I mean, that was the plan. And yet, cops getting shot in the head and children having to watch their parents be raped and murdered, that doesn't make people cry. That doesn't make people take a stand. But a fat shaming video on YouTube does. That's, that's, I want to say that's effed up, guys. I want to use the F word, okay? It is. It's effed up. It's effed up that the things that people take a stand on and get treated like martyrs for is effed up. It's not okay. Like, this is not where the information superhighway was supposed to take us. It wasn't supposed to go here, okay? There are real problems in the world, okay? There is murder in the world. Did Nicole Arbor kill anyone? No. Did Nicole Arbor rape anyone? Did Nicole Arbor kidnap anyone? Bring back our girls. Hashtag bring back our girls. Look that up. Did Nicole Arbor molest anyone? No, she made, honestly, a dorky YouTube video that was like, it wasn't even her best video. I, went, I, went, I was like, this chick must be a hateful chick. So as soon as her channel came up, I watched a bunch of her videos because I thought, well, her channel might go back down because she's so hateful. That was not even one of her good videos. She had a couple that were kind of funny. So, I made notes for this, believe it or not. But I've done this like five times, so I haven't really had to use the notes for this one. Um, I talked about Dennis Leary. I have 200 plus videos. I told you about my pillow and the five pound dumbbell. I told you about comedy. Uh, everybody was fair game. I talked about the ISIS and all that. Um... Actually, everything that's in my notes is already covered, so I, get, I mean, I guess I could beat the horse a little bit, and I could say, like, you just should not be crying over that video. That video is not grounds to cry. It's not. Cops getting shot in the head. If you're the type of person to cry, that's grounds to cry. Oh, I actually did have something in the notes. I didn't, when I was glancing, I didn't notice it, but there was something in the notes. So you guys said, hold on, I don't want to say you guys because that's like condemning language. Sorry, strike that. All right, so people have said that Nicole Arbor is um, BSing when she says she cares about fat people's health. Maybe she is, maybe she's not, but let me tell you a few things. All right, a couple things. My children's grandfather has diabetes, and it's because he ate too much, right? And then he never got it treated, and he's legally blind now. I don't talk about my family on the internet very much and the people in my family very much, people in my personal life in general, because in this day and age they have internet, all right? I would hate for them to see this video on Facebook one day. So I try not to put their personal business out there. But long story short, this is somebody who is in my life that I personally know. And his testimony to me that he has shared with me is, you know, he's blind from the diabetes. And he wishes that he would have stopped eating the way he ate when he when he had the chance. Okay? He much like me, like I've seen pictures of him from back in the day, 
much like me, like when he was younger, he was healthy and he was buff and he worked out and he was like good looking dude. And I didn't ask him why. I'm, I don't, I'm not that way. I didn't ask him why. But at some point, he just didn't take care of himself anymore. And he's blind and he, he's told me. So when you say that Nicole Arbor is concerned trolling or this, that, or the other, I got a guy in my own life that told me two years ago, before I ever sat down in front of this camera, he told me two years ago that he wishes he would not have basically inflicted himself with blindness. All right? You say she's concerned trolling, but I don't think you're looking at the big picture. All right? I'll tell you something about me. I've got high blood pressure now. And the reason I got all these health issues, or I got a lot of bad health stuff going on. And I'm trying to take care of myself, but I got a busy life. And as a result, I kind of got to do like a lot of caffeine or whatever uh, to push through. Because if I'm having too much back pain or this, that, or the other, I'm having trouble focusing or whatever, the caffeine helps me push through the day. All right. And it's too much caffeine and too much overdoing it, overextending myself. And I ended up in the emergency room with high blood pressure. I was considered to be in a pre-heart attack phase. I don't know the exact wording of it. I was going in for a doctor visit for something else completely different. And they checked my blood pressure. They sent me to the ER immediately. They checked it like four times. The nurse checked it. The doctor checked it. Another nurse checked it. And then like three people. They used like an old-fashioned spigmometer, or however you say the word, with the rubber ball. And they're like, shh, 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 shh. Again, I grew up in the 80s, so like we had those back then. I, I remember those. But like they, they were like, dude, you got to go to the hospital, man. Like you could have a heart attack when your blood pressure is this high. So fast forward to um, a couple months ago, I woke up at 4 in the morning with chest pains. The chest pains were so bad I couldn't breathe. Long story short, I go see a cardiologist that day. I woke up at 4 in the morning. So like by 9 in the morning, I was in a cardiologist's office. I was like, hey, like I didn't even want to go do rigmarole. I went straight to the cardiologist. And I, I was okay. I had a pulled muscle in my chest because I, I would overdo things. And it was like pushing on my heart. Okay, I had tissue, cartilage, whatever, put, pushing on my heart. Is that TMI? I don't know. Point being, as I was having those chest pains, I was thinking, like, I got a lot to do in my life that I have not done yet. I can't die. And the size 42 pants, I keep those in my closet, multiple pairs, because I might need them again. I've gone up and down over the last five years. I've been 38, 40, 42. And I fluctuate. And if you know anything about men's jeans, that's, that's kind of a lot. That's a lot. In one year's time, in a 12-month window... I've worn 40s in the last 12 months, all right? I've worn 40s. So I thought, like, look, man, yes, I'm stressed out. No, I don't have time to cook healthy meals, but i got to figure something out, all right? I'm not ready to die yet. i got things to do. So you say, Nicole, Ar strike that. People say, people have said, the Nicole Arbor is concern trolling. And maybe she is. And maybe this is all so she could get publicity and PR and YouTube hits. Fine, I don't care. I'm not, even gonna, I'm not trying to sit here and tell you that she is a, a good person. I'm not trying to tell you that her videos are funny. What I'm trying to tell you is what she said has truth to it. Okay, I know someone who wishes that they had not basically made themselves blind. And I, at four in the morning, thought like, all right, dude, no more excuses. You've got things to do here on this earth. You have things to do before you go. So I say all that to say it's legit. It's legit to worry about weight affecting your health. That's legit. Now, if you want to get into the argument of, oh, well, she, what, her approach wasn't going to be effective and this, that, or the other, and she's not going to make anyone lose... I don't care. I'm not trying to have that talk. And for some people, it might. What you don't understand is everybody has different forms of motivation. When I was in the military, I was awarded as a lead motivator because everyone has different things that motivates them, all right? Like some people do things for a paycheck. Some people do things for pride. Some people do things, honestly, they don't even know why they're doing them, all right? 
people have different things that motivate them, different purposes, different reasons. Like motivation is like a real fascinating topic for me. And I, as a child, I knew, and as an adult, now, now I understand that it's called negative reinforcement. But as a child, I figured out that negative reinforcement is what worked for me. And the cartoon Archer has joked about it. But when Archer jokes about negative reinforcement and his mom saying the crazy stuff to him in that cartoon, it brings back memories. Because negative reinforcement, my parents figured out, did work on me. And I've always been honest enough with myself to realize that, yeah, I mean, negative reinforcement does work better with me than positive reinforcement. But I've also worked with enough people who I've been in charge of where I realize that negative reinforcement doesn't work with them. It, it can make things worse. So you're right when you say that Nicole Arbor, her video could actually make things worse for some people. True. Um, everybody's motivated differently. If we were all motivated the same, then weight loss diet stuff like books and DVDs and whatever else programs would have already eradicated a lot of overweightness in this country, right? Or on the planet. But they haven't. And the reason is, is there's no, sil there's no silver bullet. There's no magical approach to motivate people to lose weight. It doesn't exist. So let's say for sake of argument, by and large, Nicole Arbor, her, her video is not going to motivate a bunch of people to lose weight. Like the majority. Let's say 90, she had 3 million views. And let's say 99%, 99% will not be motivated by her video, but 1% will. Okay, so let's say she offended 99% of her audience at that point. But just think that's still a lot of people. 1% of 3 million, that's still a lot of people that she could have motivated to want to lose the weight. You don't know. Just See, just because something doesn't work for you doesn't mean it didn't work for anyone else. All right, maybe, maybe that would have been a simpler place for me to take it and start with. But going back to what I said at the start of the video, that shouldn't upset you. You, I am disappointed. I'm disappointed that when I see the thought leaders or whatever on Twitter and on YouTube and all these vlogger for all these platform blogger platforms and even things like BuzzFeed or whatever when I when I see the, the young people and the thought leaders and I see that okay, I'm gonna say cry baby don't get too upset I've been trying to be nice like the whole video I promise like I've been trying to not be impolite but the the, the quote-unquote cry baby stuff I'm disappointed that that has become so prevalent because I feel like, again, like a cop getting shot in the head should have more attention than it gets. Have you even heard of that story? I mean, be honest, because a lot of people probably haven't. It didn't really get the kind of news coverage I thought it would have gotten. So, there's bigger things to be upset about than a, than a YouTube fat shaming video. I don't know, like I said, there was, there was a lot for me to talk about in this video, and maybe I didn't change anyone's mind when I made it, and maybe now I've offended you. I don't know. And this time I do mean you. Like, maybe there is a person watching this right now who is offended. I'm sorry, I'm not... Believe me, if I wanted to offend you, I could have gone old-school dock worker. Like, I could have could have just, like, really, really gone off. But, I don't know, like, I don't talk in front of the camera very much. I think I'm going to start. Uh, I've thought about doing it for a long time. And, and, but, you know, I got the fat. I'm fat. You know, I'm not overly pleasant to look at. And I got the neck fat, which is like, that makes it so even if I do want to, like, crop it to where it's just my head, it's still neck fat. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm self-conscious, right? Like, like, I could very easily, if I was the type of person to get offended by talking about fat people or whatever, I very easily could have been offended by that Nicole Harvey video. I wasn't. Let me end on that. Let, let me end on that. I wasn't offended by that video. Because when I was coming up in the 80s and 90s, believe it or not, there was an onus on people to not be offended by things. You were considered to be weak back then. Alright, so, I kid you not, 
this is the way bullying worked in the 90s. Well, the 80s. It was the 80s. So the way bullying worked in the 80s was somebody bullies you and then you cry because you were bullied. Well, then everybody would make fun of you for crying that you just got bullied. And maybe it was like real bullying. Like maybe somebody took your lunch and threw it on the ground. Or maybe somebody, uh, you brought a toy to show and tell and somebody took your toy and broke it or something. And so like real bullying, actual physical consequence bullying, not just like words making fun of, but like actual physical consequences. And if you cried, you got laughed at for crying. Do you understand how different things were back then? Um, is one way better than the other? I mean, should we really go back to things being that way? No, probably not. But at the same time, I think the pendulum has swung too far in the other direction. I don't think that you should be upset and shaking. There was somebody, look, I don't want to name names, right? I don't want to name names, and I don't want to play other people's content in my video. But there were people saying that it made their blood boil. To watch that YouTube video. And again, I go back to the closest thing to making my blood boil in the last year is what I told you about the fact that like there are villages in Africa and the Middle East where children are having to watch their parents get raped and killed. And then maybe they themselves get raped and killed after that. That makes my blood boil. Like if anything's going to make my blood boil, that is is something to get upset about. A YouTube video with a bunch of lame jokes in it is not. So this is a topic I'm probably going to talk about going forward. I've tweeted about it for a long time. Um, and if you find me on Twitter, here's what you got to understand. Like I, I shoot from the hip, right? Like I, I don't, I don't care about what's popular, like popular opinion or this, that, or the other. And I eventually end up making everybody like upset at one point or another, not because I'm trying to. But again, I'm sitting here trying to very reasonably and very self-deprecating. I showed you my pants. I showed you my, my pillow. I mean, kind of some embarrassing stuff here. I showed you my little five-pound dumbbell. Um, I'm trying to sit here and be reasonable and be self-deprecating. But this probably still offended people. It probably did. So I try, you know, like I do shoot from the hip. But I'm not I'm not trying to hurt people's feelings on purpose, but it's just so easy for feelings to get hurt these days that it, I mean it happens. Anyway guys, this has been AI Everything. Um, YouTube videos should not make you cry. And if they do, I mean if you're like in if you for real have issues where a video could trigger you, please get help. Don't 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 let that issue go unattended to. So, thanks for watching guys.